Hi, it's Roberto Mickey, and we're going to be showing a video on a humerus fracture. The unique part of this video is that we actually have the patient breaking his arm caught on film. But the most gruesome part is the sound of the fracture. And here's a little preview. That's a pretty gruesome sound. Here's a plug for the channel. Hit subscribe and hit like to help out this channel. This is the viewer discretion warning, and if you don't want to see the arm actually break, click away at this point in time. So what you can see in this video is the patient is doing a pull-up exercise. This is the humerus in the red circle, and it is the largest bone in the upper extremity. So as we watch the rest of this video, watch that area of this patient's arm, and you'll see it break right there. The patient kind of pauses and looks up at the machine thinking that maybe he broke the pull-up bar, not realizing that he actually broke his arm. And just in case you missed it, here it is again, and then again in slow motion. And you can see he breaks his arm right at that point. So here it is again in slow motion and then in full speed. So the patient ends up presenting to the emergency room and this is his x-ray of the fracture itself. It's a long spiral oblique fracture in the distal third of the humerus and here you can see it with the red arrows showing the fracture. This fracture pattern has a specific name, Holstein-Lewis, and it is associated with radial nerve injuries. This patient in particular got lucky and did not have a radial nerve injury with the fracture. Nonetheless, you can see how the radial nerve sits right where this fracture is and could be easily injured or lacerated. So we gave the patient two options. Basically, he could be casted or he could have surgery and he opted for surgical fixation of the fracture. In addition, we did get a preoperative CT scan to demonstrate that the full extent of the fracture, make sure that it didn't go into the joint. We also did an intraoperative biopsy to make sure that there wasn't a cancer that was causing this fracture as this was a relatively low energy mechanism of injury. In addition to the CT scan, we did a PTH level, a vitamin D25 level, and a thyroid level to make sure that there was no metabolic reason for his fracture or fragility. It turned out that his vitamin D level was normal. So you can see from this image that we did an open reduction internal fixation. We're using three lag screws. A lag screw technique is a technique used to squeeze two bone fragments together. And this is accomplished by over drilling the near cortex and under drilling the far cortex. By doing this, the screw only is able to gain purchase on the far cortex and not the near cortex, thus squeezing the two pieces of bone together. After the lag screw technique, we placed a neutralization plate to hold the fracture in a stable position. We used a Synthes extraticular distal humerus plate. This plate is stainless steel and made to stay in for life. This is the intraoperative fluoroscopy images of the patient's proximal end of the plate. And what I wanna show in this video, or this portion of the video, is that there are two different types of screws demonstrated here. One is a cortical non-locking screw, and one is a locking screw and both are 3.5 millimeters in diameter. The advantage of the non-locking screw is that you can squeeze the plate down to the bone with a non-locking screw. The advantage of locking screw is that it is a fixed construct and much more stable. In this final video sequence, we show the patient's range of motion on his last visit, and you can see he has full supination and pronation. He has full flexion and extension of the elbow, and uh, he's doing extremely well uh, after his surgery. Well, everyone, thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed the video and we'll get a new one out in the near future.